first-rate fire truck built to prevail in the battle against the flames. Pierce from Wisconsin, USA, is one of the biggest manufacturers of firefighting apparatus in the world. It's a vehicle made from a combination of aluminum and steel. Tons of life-saving equipment assembled with millimeter precision and a chassis that allows it to rapidly get to the scene of the emergency. The factory is extremely flexible when it comes to incorporating customer wishes, but still manages to produce a top quality product in an impressively short time. Pierce produces its fire trucks in the 70,000 strong town of Appleton in the state of Wisconsin. Over 1,000 vehicles leave this factory each year. The models carry names like Impel, Arrow, Sabre, and Enforcer. The customers design their trucks down to the smallest of details. The lettering is made from real gold leaf. Pierce offers everything from chrome trim to giant turntable ladders. And nearly everything is built by hand. A high performance pump system is of key importance. Pierce also offers extra large trucks. But one model is the undisputed customer favorite the Enforcer. The cab has eight seats. The pump thrusts 5,600 liters into the hoses each minute. An onboard 3,000 liter tank ensures there's sufficient water for firefighting. A 33 meter turntable ladder sits on the roof. And the heavy truck can corner at up to 90 kilometers an hour. Project manager Bill Kyle supervises production of the fire trucks. Each truck is custom designed by the client, so errors can creep in quickly, especially at the first stage, the chassis. Precision is vital here because it has to accommodate all of the enforcer's components. If the assemblers don't stick to the dimensions, the entire production will fail. This is the birth of the truck. We start matching it up to what the customer specifications are, so we make sure we meet that. The customer actually starts picking where they want certain things on their truck, and we need to land that right here on the berth of the truck. The initial phase of construction is extremely important because it lays the foundation for all subsequent steps. Todd Lindbergh mounts two 12-meter steel girders for the chassis. As the assembler must make sure that everything is installed absolutely level and equally spaced. To do this, he clamps the steel girders in place using hydraulic presses. They prevent the parts from shifting. The yellow base frame ensures the construction is level. Without such aids, the chassis could lose precision and affect production. These cross members are kind of made to fit. So once they're tight, we should be right at 34 inches. Otherwise, we'll either pull the frame in or move it out and keep it the right, right width so that down the line everything fits. Assembler Todd and his colleagues bolt the chassis together with several cross members. This prevents anything from shifting. The chassis alone weighs nearly four tons. It's the foundation on which the rest of the Enforcer truck will be built. It will be another 44 days until construction is complete. Pierce employs nearly 2,000 assembly workers. One of the key elements is fitted right at the beginning. 
the axle together with matching shock absorbers. This component makes it possible to drive at high speeds, even around corners. The axle system goes by the name Tech 4. Pierce builds this component of the fire truck in its own factory too. It takes a team of three workers to construct the Tech 4 suspensions. The Tech 4 was originally only intended for use on military vehicles. It allows for rapid travel even over rough terrain. The engineers at Pierce take advantage of its properties for their own requirements. Thanks to its long travel suspension, the Tech 4 axle offers 25 centimeters of vertical deflection. No other chassis allows for such tight cornering. It's able to do a U-turn at a crossroads without having to maneuver. The axle can also accommodate huge brake discs with a diameter of 43 centimeters. They can bring the enforcer to a stop significantly faster than other axles. The customer also has a choice when it comes to the axles and shock absorbers. Different axles can be fitted to the same chassis. Thanks to its handling characteristics, the Tech 4 is a very popular option, but also the most expensive. We build our suspension from the ground up. A lot of other manufacturers buy their chassis from another supplier. Pierce starts from the ground up. We start framing it up. We get some of the key components here installed. We'll pick it up and we'll move it over here and we'll install the suspension parts and some of the axles. The team maneuvers the chassis into position. It must be located exactly on the attachment points. The spring eyes afford zero tolerance. Everything must fit perfectly. The subframe is now complete. The rest of the components are already being fabricated by other departments. The Appleton factory is home to the fabrication shop. It's where the chassis, cab, and body are built. The assembly line is located a few miles away. This is where the workers install the electrical systems as well. Pierce also has a paint shop, materials warehouse, and proving grounds here. The enforcer's journey continues in the fabrication shop. Every one of the enforcer's components is made in punch presses like this. Workers place aluminum sheets in the machine. The press punches the pieces out according to a computer-controlled pattern. The workers have to produce hundreds of thousands of parts. Like the parts of a giant clock movement, all of the pieces are perfectly matched to one another. Bill Kurzweil's team must adhere to the engineer's specifications down to the millimeter. There is a very small margin for error. If you think about if the part is bent over 90 degrees and it has to go onto another part, it won't fit. If it's a sixteenth of an inch narrow, it won't fit over the top of another part. Bill's workers check each finished part using gauges. In addition, scanners in the press rolls check whether everything is within specification. A laser cutter is used for finer cutting patterns because the human eye is too imprecise. The challenge for team leader Bill is not just the multitude of parts, but the tight production schedule. When the other plant is having any kind of technical problem, they contact us if they have a part that's scratched or damaged or whatever was ordered incorrectly. We can stop production, create a brand new part, nest it, punch it, form it, and ship it back over to them in less than four hours. From the truck door to the hose mount, every single part of the fire truck is made here.
The formed aluminum parts then move from the fabrication shop to the other side of the factory, where they're used to construct the cab. The workers now assemble the various aluminum and steel sections. Everything must fit together perfectly. Fixtures are used to precisely align the pieces that need welding. The welders use clamps to hold them in place. A warp cab would impair the enforcer's handling characteristics. Amanda Halford oversees assembly of the cab. She isn't just concerned about the angles and gap conditions of the individual components. Did Marvin get the glue issue worked out? We need to make sure that all of the welds um, are smooth, that they're even, that they look consistent, um, that there's no weld defects, um, and then also just meeting all of those options. That's what's going to be critical to us. The welds mustn't be too thick, or the doors won't close properly. The welds mustn't be too thin either. This would impair stability. It takes the team two to three days to build a cab. During this time, it remains at the same construction bay. This means that it's the responsibility of one worker from start to finish. The cab of the enforcer truck now has a roof. The workers weld grab rails and handles inside the cab so that the firefighters can get in and out quicker in an emergency. Every cab is custom made according to the client's wishes. The workers have welded nearly three tons of steel and aluminum together to form an integral unit. Every cab must be extremely robust to withstand the rigors of the job. Approximately five cabs leave the assembly shop each day. They then move to the other factory site, where the future fire truck is given its distinctive paintwork in the company's own paint shop. A first coat of gray-white primer has already been applied to the bare steel and aluminum. For the perfect paint finish, workers remove every last trace of dust from the surface with compressed air guns. The cab is also wiped down so that the paint adheres consistently. The individual nature of each order is especially apparent when it comes to the color scheme. Pierce offers hundreds of shades of red. And there's a huge selection of yellows too. If a customer still can't find what they're looking for, the company will mix custom colors as well. The time has come. Two specially trained painters prepare the paint for this fire truck in the making. First, they apply another last coat of primer. Only then does the cab of the truck receives its hallmark fire engine red. Pierce entrusts this job to humans rather than robots because they apply the paint more evenly. It takes the painters up to one hour to complete each coat of paint. The components bake in a drying oven over 150 degrees Celsius. And the cab is ready for the next shop, where it will receive some of its fittings and equipment. How it will look in detail is determined by the engineers in the 3D design studio in close consultation with the customer. Every truck is custom designed. 11 employees plan every single vehicle in detail on a computer with the help of a 3D model. 
all of the other shops must stick to this master. The customers expect a great deal of their special fire trucks. After all, their quality can be a matter of life and death. From the smallest screw to the gigantic turntable ladder, everything must fit perfectly. The cab stays in the assembly building for the time being, but moves on to a different shop, the wiring shop. It doesn't take long before the empty cab is transformed into a fully equipped command center with a warning light system on top. Thousands of feet of cables are installed throughout the cab. Electrician Joe Bauer installs a yellow wiring harness for the airbags. There are hundreds of cables in each cab, so it's vital to keep track of things. It's just getting everything right because everything is custom made, so it's one company wants this and one company wants that, so you got to make sure you have everything in the right order. Rick Roberts is the cab assembly supervisor. He regularly checks up on progress. It's essential that each work step is performed in a set sequence to avoid any mistakes. We set the harnesses inside. There's uh, certain procedures in which we need to, to follow in order to assure that they're dropped out. In a lot of cases, there's uh, tape points or something that tells us where the starting point is. We drag it through the, uh, the cab. We make the dropouts. What we're really doing is we're starting to make sure that all the circuits are the correct circuits being dropped out in each one of these areas. Um, we verify to make sure that there's no damage to the harness after we run through it. We're also making sure that it's secured as it runs through the cab. Um, if there's anything that comes through the roof, we make sure that all, seal, all areas are sealed uh, so we don't have any leakage into the cab. Next, all of the cables are protected with a fuse. Where, where are we at right now with it? So you, right now you just said you, we just got started. Yep. Uh, you're gonna make your connections to your, your bus bars, your yep. fill panels. Put all the battery cables in, the transmission harness. So what are we missing so far? Uh, still have to install the, the dash. Every worker is responsible for different tasks and completes them in strict order. This minimizes mistakes and maintains efficiency. As we go through our stages, we gotta make sure that everything's in place before we move on to the next step. Because as you go through this whole process, you'll notice that once we have our harnesses in, we make our final connections, there's gonna be wall panels put in, and we have some cabinets that go in, then we have the seats, and we can't do it out of sequence, otherwise we'd have to tear the cab back apart to, to, to put the harnesses in or any additional wiring. So it is very important that we do it in sequence, otherwise it causes us a lot of rework. And this must be avoided at all costs, of course. These vending machines are unique to Pierce. They're located all over in the factory. The workers fetch work materials, such as drill bits, sealants, and even simple brushes as and when needed. The advantage, Pierce only pays for the work materials that are actually used. As long as it's still in the vending machine, it doesn't belong to the company. Once the fire truck has been equipped with the fuse boxes, the radio communication systems are installed. Hundreds of kilometers of wires are installed in each truck within just four days. The interior fittings includes the seats. The customer can choose everything from the type of seat cover material to the logo. There are eight seats installed in each enforcer truck in a space-saving configuration so the firefighters have plenty of room to move around. The cab is then ready for technical acceptance. At this point, all we're really trying to do is make sure that all the circuits are working properly, all the switches are functioning properly, all our lighting is functioning properly. 
just to assure that when it goes to the next stage, the cab gets mounted onto the chassis, that we don't have any issues. It's a tense moment for team leader Rick. Have all the cables been laid properly? And is everything working flawlessly? Electrician Mark Moser performs the check. If the enforcer cab doesn't pass this test, a time-consuming search for the fault will begin. Mark uses a software program to assist him with the technical acceptance. He runs through all of the functions one by one. There are no problems this time. Test passed. It's great satisfaction in that. That's our ultimate goal here is to make sure that we produce a quality product to our downstream customers. So. A milestone has been reached. This truck is fitted out and ready to get powered up. But several important steps still lie ahead before the fire truck is ready for service. Work continues in the adjacent area where workers mount the finished elements onto the enforcer's chassis in the assembly area. The huge engine block will now be installed at this precise location on the chassis. It not only drives the truck, but supplies the pump system and turntable ladder with power as well. Assembly worker John Cruel must be careful that the 500 horsepower engine doesn't crush any cables during installation. The technician can only install everything safely with the help of a colleague. It's one of your main hookups for everything, so your, your chassis and everything is communicating with your chassis and gauges are communicating with the engine and everything. It's one of the main, main hookups. Assembly worker John must bolt everything together tightly. The engine will be in service for several decades for a good cause, and this thought motivates the workforce. I've been here uh, 12 and a half years now. I've been doing uh, building fire trucks and stuff. It's nice that it's going back to uh, men and women who need it and stuff, you know. It's a good feeling. It's, a, it's, it's like a big community or whatever with all the firefighters and stuff. Another hurdle has been overcome. Pierce manufactures trucks in its Appleton factories seven days a week. Brakes are a must. Every shift has several. The workers bring along their own food and prefer to spend their break time on their smartphones. Everyone enjoys the peace and quiet in the otherwise so noisy factory. Although Pierce does offer snacks in the break rooms, most of the workers prefer to stay at their workplaces. In the assembly building, workers are now installing the enforcer's windshield. This is followed by the marriage of the cab and chassis. This will show whether the work thus far has been done properly. Have all shops adhered strictly to the engineering drawings? The mechanics must be careful not to crush any of the cables that are hanging down. Done. The precision workmanship at the previous stages has paid off. In parallel to this, one of the most important components of the fire truck is being built at a sister factory eight kilometers away in the north of the town. It's pump. Pierce buys the pumps from specialist vendors. Here, they're prepared for installation. The pump is the core component of the enforcer. It sits securely anchored directly behind the cab and approximately the center of the vehicle. Connections lead from the pump to the enormous water tank. When in operation, the pump thrusts up to 5,600 liters of water into the hoses each minute. 
In order to do this, it needs to be supported in a sturdy frame, the so-called pump house. This ensures that the truck doesn't begin shaking under the enormous forces and pump performance remains stable. In cities, the pump is connected to a fire hydrant. It distributes the water amongst the hoses and controls the pressure. An onboard tank serves as a reserve. Some jobs, however, don't just require water, but foam too. This is generated by the foam system by mixing water with air and a concentrate. The firefighters can adjust the exact composition of the foam via a control panel. Assembler James Philbrick now fits connector pipes to the pump for the fire truck's water tank. It takes a lot of experience to get the positioning right. You can't fight a fire if you can't turn on the water. The control levers are installed by the specialist colleagues next door. Yeah, so just tack everything. You got weld bits and pipe, and we just tack everything together. Then we take it off, which I'm going to do right now, and I take it over to Mark. He's our TIG welder, and he'll TIG it all up. And then... We'll come back like that and put it back in. It should be all sealed up. It's a complicated and time-consuming jigsaw puzzle, with each station contributing their own piece. Once the welding work has been completed, the workers spend hours connecting the hoses and valves. The pump spends around a week at the pump up before being released for installation. Extra care must be taken during this production step because if the pump doesn't work properly, this costly fire truck isn't for purpose and is absolutely useless for fighting fires. The finished pump house is transported to the other side of Appleton for installation at the assembly plant. Its home is behind the cab. Brian Vinthurst is responsible for ensuring it's installed correctly. He must mount it perfectly square and level. Making sure that it's jigged correctly, making sure that it's balanced so that when we do hang it over the chassis, we come down nice and nice and level. So, uh, especially for, um, for quality, we don't want to damage anything. Every pump is custom made too. A real challenge for Brian. So there's lots of different weight variations in the pump, which I use the come-alongs and weight, uh, sandbags to make sure that I can level that out because there's different weight distributions because all the pumps are custom. Assembler Brian has to position the pump exactly. Only then can he lower it onto the chassis. If mounted incorrectly, the pump could unbalance the entire truck, affecting its firefighting capabilities. The pump is not yet positioned correctly. It's protruding too far over one side of the black chassis. Assembler Brian makes the necessary adjustments, millimeter by millimeter. He finally sets the pump down. Is everything in the right place? What I'll do is I'll drop the cab. The cab will come pretty close to the pump house here. Um, the, the, the pump house does sit in some isolators and I want to take some measurements to make sure that we're, we're uh, we're the same distance on each side, making, making it square here so that when it goes down the line, uh, we don't run into issues with it being unsquare. It will soon become apparent whether the enforcer's pump house is in the right place. There has to be a two inch gap between it and the cab. And there is. Brian has installed the pump exactly according to plan. Very happy. 
the pump went on the way it was supposed to. It's square off of the off of the cab. Therefore, when it goes down to the line, uh, the, the body will go on uh, nice and square. The chassis has already been mated with the cab, the engine, and the pump house. Our fire truck is now taking shape. But the enforcer's entire turntable ladder assembly is still missing. This is where the so-called torque box comes in. This is a tubular structure made from thick sheet steel. It forms the connection between the chassis and the turntable ladder. The torque box stabilizes the truck when the aerial is in use and provides storage for ground ladders. On the back, there's a large pedestal where the ladder will later sit. A team of three workers mounts the torque box on the chassis of the fire truck. It's so large that one person can't keep an eye on everything at once. Two cranes lift the seven-ton monster into position. While the black box is still hovering above the chassis, the workers run the hydraulic hoses into place. They connect the engine with the pedestal of the turntable ladder, allowing it to move independently of the truck and access even the most difficult fire scenes. Again and again, the technicians have to intervene to ensure there is no interference with the chassis. But in the end, they get it in the right position. Another important step has been accomplished. The fire truck is still missing its rear structure, the so-called body. This is manufactured in the sister factory, in the fabrication shop. This shop manufactures the body from pre-cut sheet aluminum, similar to the cab. The workers join the sheets with clamps to form the large side panels. This is followed by a lot of welding work. A day's work later, and both side panels of the enforcer truck are finished. The workers have to strictly adhere to the panel dimensions so that everything fits together in the end. They use the detailed master construction plan as a reference. The body needs a lot of storage space for the firefighters' tools and hoses. The water tank will be installed in the middle, protected by the side panels. Production manager Bill is present for the installation of the body. It will now be determined whether all of the teams have followed the specifications of the 3D design studio. We're getting ready to pick up this body and mount it onto the chassis. All of our mounting angles uh, are all leveled and ready to go. So we're at that point in the op phase that we're ready to pick this up and mount the body onto the chassis. For Bill, it's like a big puzzle made up of many individual parts that gradually come together to form a complete picture. The enforcer enters the decisive final assembly stage. We're making sure that our platform in the back here is level with the platform in the front so we have the body level on each side and front to back. So we'll make sure that the body figures in with the pump and with the cab once it gets up to be that far. Another critical moment. Have their colleagues in the fabrication shop completed their work accurately? Will the six meter long component sit properly? Okay, go ahead. Production manager Bill directs his colleagues with centimeter precision. A small gap between the cab, pump, and body is desired. It makes the enforcer more flexible on uneven roads, but the design as a whole doesn't include much tolerance. Finally, the body fits and is waiting for the next component to be installed. This task is performed by foreman Brock Rosendale. His job is to mount the enforcer's 3,000 liter water tank in the body. If the tank swings uncontrolled into one of the body's side panels, it could be damaged. Brock takes it slowly. If all the dimensions are right, it isn't a complicated task for him, but care must be taken here, too.
cradle's tolerance is only about a half an inch bigger than the tank. So this one with the walls being so close and there's weldments inside the walls, it's pretty, pretty precise. That's why we go nice and slow with the crane. So. The body, including the water tank, has been successfully installed. The fire truck is ready for the final and all important assembly steps. These include the application of the lettering, an emblem of the future owners. In North America, Pierce's main sales territory, a great deal of importance is attached to the visual elements. A lot of time and attention to detail goes into this step. The design shop creates all logos by hand. The lettering is not just applied using normal paint, but is embellished with real gold leaf. Only if the customer orders it, of course. The enforcer is still missing a crucial component. The turntable ladder is built in the so-called aerial shop. The 33 meter long ladder is mounted on the pedestal of the torque box. Depending on the customer order, a large work platform or remotely controlled nozzle is mounted at the tip. New ladders are delivered to the aerial shop several times a week. A supplier located around 100 kilometers away in Kiwani, Wisconsin, manufactures the turntable ladders. All that arrives are the individual ladder segments, however. The workers have to run all the cabling and install them ready for deployment. In terms of surface area, the aerial shop is the largest shop in the entire factory. Jeremy Pahoki is responsible for final assembly of the delivered ladder elements. His team runs the cables and control technology for each ladder. Jeremy and his colleagues need a whole day for the work. The turntable ladder is a complicated and important component of the enforcer. The ladder elements mustn't pinch any cables. Jeremy must also ensure that the ladder can run freely and has sufficient play. Pierce guarantees its customers that the 33 meter ladder can be extended in under a minute. It's very important that we test this ladder. We run it in and out. We check all the clearances. We have people watching all over the ladder. Everything must clear. And uh, we'll do this a couple of times and make sure everything is correct. If not, we will make the corrections and uh, keep going. Testing the ladder on the ground before it's mounted on the fire truck is important in order to detect any faults as early as possible because making corrections is very difficult once the turntable ladder is mounted on the truck. Pierce offers a 20-year guarantee on its turntable ladders. So everything's going very well with this one. These are uh, a very straightforward design, um, very easy to put together for me. There's not too many problems I, I run into with it. Pierce supplies six different ladder lengths, and again, customization is key. The customer can also choose the color, the control technology, and what type of tip they want on their ladder. The Pierce ladder can reach up to the 10th floor of a building. It's made from high strength steel. This means it can support the high loads at the tip of the aerial. The sturdy construction of a ladder makes it heavy at the same time. The torque box structure transfers all aerial loads onto the outriggers. The outriggers keep the truck in its proper position while operating the aerial device. The Enforcer fire truck is now ready for the final step, installation of the ladder. This task is performed by Steve Ochen. Well, right now, the most important part about 
all of this is to make sure that we don't twist the ladder when we pick it up under its own weight and that uh, we keep our area safe, make sure nobody's gonna be walking under it in case the cranes were to fail at any way. Steve and his colleague Cody Dean hang the 33 meter long ladder from two cranes. The installation begins. Despite the size of this component, it requires millimeter precision to install successfully. Steve has to feed a thin anchor cable into the swivel anchor at a particular angle. He has no devices to help him, only the experience and watchful eyes of his colleague, Cody. Going down. First, the assembler lowers the turntable ladder until it's roughly in position. Then, he starts making fine adjustments. Right now, I have to angle the ladder so that I can drop the swivel anchor into the anchor point on the swivel. So I'm just trying to get the right angle between the front and the back so that I can start lowering it down. It would be bad if we were to break something. These parts are very expensive. <laughs> The electrician starts lowering the platform very slowly because it's a matter of millimeters. Colleague Cody tries to find the correct position. The upper ladder platform has to fit onto the anchor pins of the swivel module. All right, I'll pick up the front. Will the installation fail at this last critical point? It's a matter of millimeters. Things go better the second time around, but the connector cable is causing problems. Can't see it? No, it runs with these spacers. I can never see the... Come on down a little bit. Keep coming. Oh, it already hit. I'm gonna try to go it? back south. And then, the breakthrough. The ladder cable is inserted into the right connection of the swivel module of the torque box. 20 minutes later, the ladder sits majestically atop the enforcer. I mean, we had a little bit of an issue trying to eye up the swivel anchor to the swivel, but everything went really well. The team still has to make the cable connections and securely bolt the ladder in place. But then the enforcer truck is finished. Custom made according to customers' wishes. It is a very nice challenge. Um, it is great to be a part of doing something a little different every day. We designing it to the customers, having the right framework for this certain truck and making sure that we meet what the customer is looking for. Before the enforcer is delivered to the customer, it's first put through its paces. The company has its own proving grounds for this purpose. In this building, engineering manager Dan Reiter tests the enforcer's pump. He runs it for two hours at full power. An unbelievable 5,600 liters of water flows through the connection pipes each minute. This is the volume each pump must deliver when fighting a fire. And keep doing so for many years to come. It's not running right, we'll start looking into it. If we got something not hooked up right, um, is there a fault with the pump, something not plumbed correctly? Uh, so we start doing some investigating to see why it's, why it's not pumping correctly. The water that's pumped through the system doesn't go to waste, but is recirculated. Sensors detect any irregularities in the pumping operation, but everything runs smoothly with the enforcer today. A momentous occasion. The fire truck is about to leave the factory grounds 
for the very first time. One of the most important features of this fire truck is the special axle suspension system. It's designed to enable the emergency services to reach their destination quicker because it allows for cornering at higher speeds. Today's driver is David Hutchins. He drives the Enforcer around Appleton for a test drive. Then he heads for the closed off testing area. Here, an obstacle course of bumps and potholes await the Tech 4. Does it deliver the promised suspension travel of 25 centimeters? The expensive axle system fully meets expectations. The second important test is passed. For the final task, tester David connects the enforcer to a water supply. The pump starts up. The outriggers of the torque box extend. It's now time for the turntable ladder and the remotely controlled nozzle at its tip. David controls the ladder as it would be during a real emergency from the control panel on the turntable. It should take less than 60 seconds to completely extend the ladder. Are all the cables properly secured? Everything must function perfectly, so it performs when it matters. The ladder extends smoothly during this test. David and his colleague maneuver the ladder into position for the final test. The pump is running, the water flowing. David sprays water out of the remote-controlled nozzle across varying settings. And we don't have any leaks. Ladder, it, it's working good. The long turntable ladder works perfectly in all configurations and exhibits no defects. The colleagues from the aerial shop have done their job well. A new fire truck has passed its third and final test and will shortly be delivered to the customer. The enforcer is finished according to plan and performs well in every test. It took roughly three months to build and the new truck from Appleton will be delivered to another group of brave firefighters and can expect to be saving lives in service for the next 25 years.